I'm sitting here with Kurt Budge, the CEO of Be Wolf Mining. More welcome. Thank you. Let's start off this interview with you describing Be Wolf Mining. Beowulf is a listed exploration development company. We've been listed in Stockholm since 2008, and we're also listed in London. Um, we have activities in Sweden, Finland, and Kosovo. We're most well known for our Kalak iron ore project in Norbotten County in northern Sweden, uh, for which we got an exploration, uh, exploitation concession last year, March 2022. And then in Finland, we have an exploration development company in the graphite sector. Um, we're looking at both uh, defining natural resources, but also moving to to develop a downstream anode materials production capability. And then in Finland, we're exploring for base metals and precious metals through our investment in Vardar Minerals, in which we own 61% of the company. You were here two weeks ago, but since the last interview, Beowulf has uh, published a prospect for rights issue, and the subscription period is now open. How are you feeling about that? I'm looking forward to it, to it being completed, if I'm honest. Um, these processes take a long time to put together. And, uh, and really the, the real work starts when we've actually completed the capital raising, we've got the funds in and we can actually get to work. So yeah, I'm looking forward to, uh, to getting it done and dusted. We pre previously discussed the Kalak North scoping study. Uh, can you tell us what, hap what is happening now? So since we got the, the, the results from the scoping study and announced them to the markets, really we're looking at all the value drivers and the opportunities that we should be exploring in pre-feasibility. So I think uh, I, was, I wanted to be very clear in explaining to, to investors that the study that we had done is just for Calac North, and that's a small part of the bigger picture and the jigsaw that we're trying to put together. And that uh, when we think about how we can improve and increase the value of the project, we're looking at ways of expanding the resource, extending the life of mine, the opportunities to, to have a higher production capacity and, and also to, to produce higher value products. So there's lots of different work streams that we're now going to kick off once we've got the capital raising done. You talk about exploration upside and how this can support our longer life mine. Can you be more specific about that? Yes, again, the, the scoping study was focused on Calac North only, and that's only a small part of the, the total iron mineralization that we've defined in the area. So I think, you know, it might be confusing for some, but the scoping study was Calac North. The Calac project is actually Calac North and Calac South. And we have a significant exploration target in Calac South. And then Beowulf has, uh, Jokmokain has a, a number of exploration licenses around Calac, um, which combined uh, give us a figure of 389 million tons of iron mineralization. That's not resources and it's not reserves, which would necessarily build into a feasibility study, but it gives us an opportunity to, to go and do further exploration work to increase the size of the resource and then within the, the fullness of time, put that into a mining plan. And in addition to those, those Calic licenses, as we would describe them, we've also got the Orgo Siega license to the Northeast which the SKU uh, put a historic resource, which isn't classified, of 75 million tons on that. So within the area, there's a lot of iron mineralization. If we're moving on, can we touch upon uh, Vardar and Graphin Tech? What is the latest? So the start of the year with Graphin Tech in Finland, which is our graphite exploration development company, looking at developing a downstream capability in anode materials production. We announced a pre-feasibility study there to look at the options available to us for establishing a, an anode materials production hub, as we would call it. Um, so that work is ongoing now. We're hoping to complete that by the end of the first quarter. And in addition to that, what we've done both in Sweden and in Finland is to start with a, a resource base. So in, in Sweden, we have a defined iron, iron ore resource, and in Finland, we have a defined graphite resource, natural flake graphite resource, and from that, that gives us the foundation to then build our business on top of. So we're doing the, the downstream work, the downstream study work, but we're also looking at increasing our um, natural flake graphite resource footprint, as we would describe it. So that means more exploration work in a license that we talked about at the end of last year called Repsiervi, as well as doing some optimization work around our Italampi project which we have 1.275 million tons of contained graphite in, looking at how that integrates with our downstream ambitions. And then, sorry, Vardar, you wanted me to talk about. So with Vardar, 
Um, last year was a, a year of tremendous exploration success with Varda. And really what we're doing is now is building on the work that we did last year, the, the discovery of uh, the poly, uh, polymetallic epithermal deposit and, and also the exploration targets around the Mitrovica license and looking at how we would go about uh, drilling those targets this year and hopefully coming up with the mineralized, economic mineralized grades that we're, we're looking for. BFWOLF typically announces its prelim preliminary result in the end of February. How do you summarize the progress and uh, how the company has worked over the last 12 months? Well, I think the, <clears throat> the company has moved significantly forward. And I think when it comes to the Calac project, it's most evident there. Getting the exploitation concession in March of 2022 was a, a, a key milestone in the development of Beowulf. Um, and, and looking forward now, we, in the last few weeks, we've had the pre-feasibility, uh, sorry, the scoping study results um, put out for Calac North. So those two milestones, as well as the work streams that are taking place with regards to environmental permitting, there's a huge momentum now coming behind the Calac project. And then in, Vard in Kosovo, uh, the exploration success we had last year um, to discover the polymet polymetallic epithermal system and then to come up with all these exploration targets and then to finish off the end of the year identifying the same sort of uh, mineralized system as we're seeing in the, in the adjacent mining, mining project, the Stan Turg mine. Um, we're very excited about what we can achieve in Kosovo this year. Uh, and then Grafintech, we've maintained the momentum behind our ambitions of building a downstream business in nanomaterials. So it's not a bad place to be when you've got defined resources and you're operating in the lithium mine battery sector in Finland and in Europe. You mentioned earlier that you can't wait that the capital raise is going to be completed. But when it is complete, uh, what are your investment priorities and what's the news for investors going forward here? I think uh, the, the key priority for us is for, for Jok Makain to be uh, getting behind the Calac project and uh, really pushing our work streams on, on Calac. Um, we've talked about uh, drilling the resource, the exploration target in Calac South. You know, ideally we convert that into uh, a resource and then we can start to integrate that in, in an overall development plan for the Calac mine rather than Calac North and Calac South. So that's one of the key areas of focus at the moment, as well as the, the work streams associated with better understanding the value driver so that we can increase the value of the Calac project as a whole. And, and there's a lot of uh, emphasis going into how we innovate around Calac and uh, how we create the most sustainable mining operation possible. So the work that Ulla Sandborg is doing, that leading Jok Mokain, is, is, is really where our focus is going, as well as also you know, doing what's necessary with the other parts of the business. To uh, conclude this interview, what would you like to have achieved by the end of this year? Number one is a higher share price. <laughs> I think uh, my, my, my shareholders would, uh, would thank me for that. But I think with all the progress that we've made over the, the last year, and, and clearly with, um, you know, there are other factors outside of the control of the company which have affected markets as a whole, but uh, I'm not happy with where the share price is at. Uh, I think uh, we've, we've demonstrated that we've got value in the company and it's for me to do a better job of communicati communicating that to the, the markets and, and driving the share price. So yeah. Number one is uh, share price. Sounds like a good target. Thank you for meeting up with us again and good luck going forward. Thanks very much indeed.